All right. So after our flash drum problem, I just want to take a you know few minutes and just quickly look at um, how we would set up and model a continuous column um, within ChemCAD. And so I'm going to go through. This is exercise three. I have it listed, um, and I won't go through all the details, but we'll we'll try and get you know most of the uh, big picture items. And so if I want to model a distillation column, it's going to be our SCDS column which is exactly the same column we used for absorption and stripping before. And so again, I could have my inlet streams anywhere. But for distillation, I'm going to put my feed stream somewhere you know, near the middle. Within your column, you'll specify the number of trays and then the, the, you know, the, the number of stages and then the feed stage for, or the stage that your feed's going in on. Um, but um, you know, part of the problem is trying to optimize that feed location. Um, well, we'll see if we have time to get into that, right? So you'll you'll specify the number of stages. You'll specify the number of stages, and then the the stage or feed stage location as well. Okay. So I'm going to connect those two. So here I have a product stream. Um, Leaving my total con or my condenser it could be total condenser, partial condenser. We'll we'll see how we can specify that. And then here's our reboiler. So this is a reboiler, and so remember this is going to be an equilibrium contact. So it's our equilibrium contact pulled out of our column. The significance of pulling it out of our column is you know this is my one and only location where I'm adding heat to my column. So I'm adding heat to take the liquid leaving my bottom tray, heat it up to two phase coexistence. And then I have vapor being sent back into the column and liquid product coming out in stream three. Up here I have my condenser. Typically it's a total condenser. So the vapor that leaves my top train, a top tray is being condensed uh, to, to just a single liquid phase. And then some is being sent back into my column as reflux. And then others, be, the rest is being pulled out as, as product. All right, so I'm gonna change my engineering units again. So it started completely fresh from the last one. So just change mole uh, mass to kilomole. And again, I was in common SI. So in terms of uh, number, you know, setting my components, I'm going to have methanol. Water. So it'll recommend the inner TL model again, which is great. Our feed, I think it was the same. It's 100 kilomoles per hour, 55 mole percent methanol, 45 percent water, and saturated liquid at one bar. Okay, so in terms of mole percents, 55 percent methanol, 45 percent water. A saturated liquid at one bar, so specify a pressure of one bar, a vapor fraction of zero, total flow rate's 100 kilomoles per hour, then I'll flash it. So the temperature is 71.2154 degrees C. Okay. All right, so then initially for my column, we're going to have a total condenser, given the reflux ratio, a partial reboiler with the reflux ratio. And then we're told the column is 10 trays. Note that this is 10 trays plus a partial reboiler and total condenser, which gives 12 stages, right? So in the ChemCAD lingo, we'll specify 12 stages, which corresponds to 10 trays, and then we'll have a partial reboiler and total condenser. Our partial reboiler counts as an equilibrium, equilibrium contact. So technically we have 11 equilibrium contacts and then our total condenser. And equal, you know, and again, partial reboiler, that's the only place where heat's being added. And then condenser, that's the only place where heat's being removed. Okay. So I won't specify a top pressure, so it'll just be assumed to operate at the um, pressure of my, my feed. Okay, and what do we say? We have 12 stages. Okay, so I'm going to specify 12. I'm just going to guess a feed stage for now. I'll just say it's 6. And we could play around with that, right? What I would do is I would vary 
the feed stage um, to try and you know increase the the mole frac of say component y uh, or my most volatile component y in my um, I would try and increase the the concentration of my most volatile component in my distillate up here right so it'd be y coming out the top stage then it's sent to my condenser so the composition of this liquid is the same as the composition of my vapor right leaving that top tray okay but all right so i'm just going to set the feed stage as, as six for now um and you know that's it again i right? just need to specify what's what's in green okay um now condenser type we're going to have a total right by default it's total partial total with decant or partial with decant where the decant comes in is if i have a vapor product coming out the top so just picture a system that could form a minimum boiling heterogeneous azeotrope. And so if when I condense it down, if I end up with two partially miscible liquids, I can use a decanter to separate those two partially miscible liquids. But I'm going to keep it as a, a total or none for now, because we'll have a total condenser. Okay, and, and this area is optional, but since we're told we have one, right, we're, we're going to do it. So we have a total, um, so right now it says no condenser. So we want a total condenser. And we're told that our total condenser operates with a reflux ratio of 1.25. Okay, so our reflux ratio is 1.25. And then we're told we have a partial reboiler. And our partial reboiler is going to operate with a boil-up ratio of 2. Okay, uh, so... It should be this vapor divided by bottoms molar flow rate. So this is so if that um, liquid stream leaving the bottom. Okay. So I send it to partial or boiler till I get two phase equilibrium. And so this is what's being sent back in is is vapor relative to what's coming out in my bottoms as a as a bottoms product. Okay. So uh, vapor divided by bottoms molar flow rate. Okay. My boil up ratio. And our boil-up ratio is is two. Okay, cool. And so if I click OK, and I run it, okay, it runs. So coming out the top of my column in stream two, okay, I have let me change this to mole percent. Right, I have a stream which is 97% methanol and about 3% water. Okay, cool. Total flow rate 49 uh, kilomoles per hour, so almost half of my inlet stream. And coming out the bottom, I'm going to have my stream, which is rich with respect to water. Bam, and it is about uh, 51 kilomoles per hour, so about half of my inlet stream. Okay, cool. Um, and you know, we you could you could vary things. So for example, okay, let me try a sensitivity study. So if I double click on my column, okay, we could look at what's the effect of Y, uh, my vapor composition, right, um, upon changing the, the feed state of the location, right? I, I could I could do that. And so what that would look like, and as I as I say that, remember I have 12 stages, okay. Um, top stage, okay, is gonna correspond to my total condenser. Okay, stage 12 is gonna be my partial reboiler. So in terms of trays. Right, my trays would correspond to stage 2 through 11. And so I could try performing a sensitivity study. And so I could call this, say, tray location. Okay. And so what I'd want to vary is in equipment 1. Right. I could, so you could vary the number of stages. Um, but let me vary my, my first feed stage. I, I only have one feed, okay, but you, you could have multiples. So let me vary my first feed stage. Let me vary my feed stage, and I'm going to go from 2 to 11 in 10 equal steps. Okay, And what I want to record is from stream 2, Let me record the component mole frac of methanol. And then let me also track that vapor flow rate just to look at it for comparison as well. So I'm going to do the total mole rate 
as units of mole rate, and that's V. And so if I run it, okay, and I plot my results, okay, here's Y as a function of feed stage. Okay, um, and so starting at feed stage of 2, so we were just operating at 6. Okay, so it looks like you know, as the feed stage location increases, okay, this would be the tray just above my partial reboiler. But as the feed stage increases, um, I inc it looks like I increase the uh, purity of my most volatile component coming out the top in my, my disk slit. Although it seems that the difference is, is pretty small. Um, you know, after you know, six would be about here, right? So after about six, it, it's pretty flat. I could also look at V, the vapor flow rate, right? Vapor flow rate also increases, right? But doesn't increase all that much after about six. Okay. Cool, all right? So you can, you know, optimize. So in this case, the the number of stages is is fixed, and all I'm doing is I'm changing the feed location and looking at the effect on um, Y and V. Okay, but you know, again, that's that's pretty cool. I can look at the effect of um, V, my vapor flow rate, right? This isn't a huge range. It's going from 48 to, you know, 49. Okay. Um, and then this is changing the, the purity of my most volatile component coming off the top. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Okay. And that's in a sensitivity study. The other thing I can play with is if I come back up to my specifications, okay, in this version, I, I set the, the reflux ratio as 1.25, okay, in my... Um, boil up ratio is, is two and with that reflux ratio and boil up ratio coming off the top right, I have 97 percent methanol okay. well so if I click on my column okay, under specifications instead of specifying a, a reflux ratio okay what I can do is I can you know you know say hey solve the uh, reflu solve for the reflux ratio for which I would get a uh, methanol mole frac of 0.98 at the top, right? And how we would do that is adjust the spe so down here optional trace specification, adjust the specification for. Okay, now remember stage one right is my condenser and they have it labeled as condenser. Stage 12, stage N would be my reboiler, but I can say okay let's um, you know set I want to adjust the specification for the condenser until, you know, tray zero or distillate, until the distillate, so product coming off the top, and I want to do component mole frac of methanol is equal to 0 0.98. So let's see if we can vary. So it's just the specification for the condenser, which is the reflux ratio. So let's adjust the um, condensity, uh, the reflux ratio until my distillate product has a mole frac of, of 0.98. And so if I do that and I run, okay, it uses that initial reflux ratio of 1.25 as, as an initial starting guess. Okay, then it changes it, right? It solves for the value to hit that target specification. Okay, at which point then it's, it's locked in. Now you could do the same thing with the bottoms. So I could say adjust the specifications for the reboiler okay, until you can specify a specific tray, but I'll keep, you know, till I have a distillate. And let's look for a mole frac of 0 0.99, right? So can I adjust oh, the um, distillate or the boil up ratio until I can increase the purity of methanol coming off the top? Okay, and it's going to start with the initial guess of 0.2. And so if I run it, okay, this one's turning a little. Ah, oh, it didn't converge. Okay, so let's try something else. What I'm going to try is, let me put this back to 1.25. I'm going to put this back to 2. Okay, I'm going to change that back to none, just so I can run it, run the initial case again, and it, it works. And I'm going to do our initial case. Okay, but I'm going to change the boil-up ratio, the reboiler, until I have 0 0.98 mole frax methanol coming off the top. Oh, it still doesn't work, right? So it looks like just varying the boil-up ratio 
um, isn't going to cut it in this case. Okay, let me try 0 0.95. Let me actually try going the opposite way. Um, doesn't like it. So I take it back. So me just playing around with the, the reboiler duty uh, at the present moment isn't isn't doing a good job. Okay, so let me make that back two. Let's keep that 1.25 and I'll keep that as none. Okay, but that's just an example of, so in that other, you can use it to solve for operating conditions of my um, reboiler and or condenser and reboiler, you know, to specify, say, a distillate or a tray composition. Okay. So if I make the 0 0.97 again, I'm just right. So, okay, 0 0.97 works. And it gets me a value pretty close to two. Okay. So so there's a, another option. So we had we did a sensitivity study, and so with the sensitivity study, you know, here we varied the uh, feed stage. Okay, we we could do that. Okay, if I look at this besides the feed stage, you could vary the number of stages. You know, that's okay. Just remember, if I'm varying the number of stages, the feed stage location is going to keep fixed. And so it'd just be one thing to, to keep in mind. Um, and you could also even do a sensitivity study in which you played around with things like the, the reflux ratio or the boil-up ratio. That would also be um, good and fine. So hope that helps. Hope that gives you a, a good initial introduction to distillation. And we'll keep building upon it and, and playing more and more with it.